Hey guys, it is Emma here. Welcome to our cruise Q&A on a Friday. I've moved my camera slightly to the side. I hope that's okay. It's so that I can sit in this lovely comfortable chair surrounded by pillows. I've got my blanket here. It's freezing in the UK. I've even swapped my squash for a cup of tea. This is Hudson's seat. It is set up for Hudson to sit on it. He's decided just to go outside. He was here five minutes ago and I'll just show you what he thought would be appropriate to show to you guys on the internet. So this is what you would have seen if you were online five minutes ago. That way, that's not the way I want Hudson to face. <laughs> I have tempted him with dreamies and this was the face when I stopped giving him dreamies. You know, it's hard to say no to that face, but he is on a diet. I hope you guys are okay. We're just gonna have a super casual Friday today if that's all right with you. I'm so happy it's the end of the week. I feel so chilled out, cup of tea, blanket, hoodie on, very excited. I've got next week off work, which is so exciting. I have pretty much had no annual leave this entire year. So I've got annual leave to take and I thought I need it now. So I've taken some time off, which is super, super cool. Jackie has a question. She says, did you watch Ben and David's video where they went to see the ghost ships? Very cool. I haven't seen that yet. I think it might make me a bit sad, to be honest with you. Um, I will watch it. They're very, very lucky. They got to do that with a TV crew, I think. Super cool. Super cool. Enjoying your new phone, says Peter. I am loving my new phone. I have been a Android person for the last couple of years and I've gone back to iPhone and my goodness I don't think I'm going to go back to Android again it's so nice just using an iPhone again can't fault it that said this is a Dell laptop and it is so much better than me using my MacBook Pro and my proper Canon camera so I'm sticking with this this is very comfortable for me I hope it's okay for you and wherever you're from Emily says she's excited because payday is coming up in the UK, we get paid once a month and I have been paid five days ago. So I've got quite a long time until it's payday. I know a lot of you guys in America get paid weekly or every two weeks, which isn't isn't really a thing here. I don't know anyone who gets paid weekly. We get paid monthly. So I have to learn to spread that out. But all my bills come out monthly. So it makes sense to me to get paid monthly. How cold is it there? You look comfy. Um, it's not too cold compared to, I know we've got a lot of Americans in the audience who will say, you know, it's snowing, it's freezing, it's not that cold. I haven't got the heating on, really. I've got it on a tiny bit so the pipes don't get frozen and stuff, but I don't want to use the heating until I have to. I'm so snuggly. I always love being under a bl blanket, regardless of how warm or cold it is. So I'm quite happy. In Southampton, it is freezing. Yes, hello to Ben, who's here. He makes amazing, amazing cruise ships out of Lego. I, I sent him a video of one I found on Facebook, which was just insane, incredible. So if you like Lego and, and cruise ships, definitely give Ben a follow. Every other week is normal here. Yeah, I just, I just assumed, there's so many things about my life here in the UK that I just assume everybody else knows or everybody else does. And every so often something surprises me and same with the pay. Um, here it's just everything's on a monthly basis. <laughs> hello to Marcus, hello to Michael and Kevin. Kevin says, looking good, thank you Kevin, <laughs> in my best hoodie um, for a Friday evening, but I think it's quite nice. I really love these chats, I think it's just the best way to just chill out and wind down. This is so helpful, if you do ask me a question, if you can put at the beginning, question and capitals it makes it so much more likely that i'm gonna see it so jeremy says do you plan on being part of the vlogger extravaganza group cruise we need you running trivia on the ship this was suggested i was invited um but it's in 2023 and i have no idea what i'm doing in 2023 it's over in the us it's not really just a place i can be passing by um but i would like to be on that cruise of course but i think we'll have to wait closer to the time. So if you don't know about this, there's loads of cruise YouTubers, mostly American ones, I think, that are doing a group cruise in January, 2023, I think. So yeah, I'd love to be on there. It seems like a lot of fun, but for me, it's not It's not really a place I'm just passing. It's quite far. I don't know when I'm gonna be next back to America. 
um, yeah, saying other people are talking about this cruise. Maybe, I don't know. I just haven't committed to yes yet because exactly like Christopher says, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah, 2023 is just, I can't even think about it. Mark says, good to see you, Emma. Last two days of quarantine, COVID came out negative. That is fantastic. Happy Halloween. It hasn't even crossed my mind that it's Halloween. I think Halloween is a much bigger deal in America than it is here in the UK. Growing up, I kind of always had like kids Halloween parties and stuff. Um, people do do Halloween parties normally, but this year I think Halloween's just been bypassed. I haven't been in the shops. I haven't seen any Halloween stuff around. So it hasn't sunk into me yet that it's Halloween, but happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, see, lots of people are going on the 2023 cruise. I might go, I just can't commit to 2023. I normally book cruises maybe up to a year in advance, but a year is kind of pushing it for me. David says his re retirement checks come in monthly. There's two different ones that come in at different times, so it's spread out. That's nice, yeah, anything like that here also comes monthly. Um, it doesn't, even since I worked kind of in a shop when I was 16, it was all monthly. When are you gonna start, says Peter. I'm not starting anything today. Last week was trivia, this week is Q&A. So I'm just here to chat to you guys. It is called uh, Hudson Hangout this week. I haven't got Hudson yet, he's outside, but fingers crossed he will come back. A haunted car wash. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I didn't, didn't even consider that that was a thing. Oh, good one from Wayne. He says, I'm going to stick to Southampton Cruises next year. Halloween last year on Emerald Princess in Santorini. That sounds amazing. I'm kind of going with the same thing for next year because I think it's just so much easier if you can do home port cruises. There's amazing places to visit. Um, but I kind of do, it's not that I avoid cruising from the UK, but I look normally to fly somewhere warmer because the weather here can be drizzly and rainy and gross year round. So I do try to kind of get to the sunshine, but I think with all of this stuff, it's so much easier to cut out the problem of having flights and hotels and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, sorry Hudson's not here at the minute. He has gone outside. I did feed him dreamies to try and get him here, but he is not here yet. Is it weird for you guys to be slightly further over in my house? I think it's strange, you know when you watch a TV show and you see so many sections of a house and then in your brain you have kind of a picture of how it all fits well together? Um, well, this is just slightly to the side. So my desk is right there, that's what's glowing. Then my piano is on that side. My chair is there and this room is my entire house. This is the chimney. Hudson likes to try and climb up that chimney. And uh, down here, I have a meerkat that protects the chimney. He hasn't got a name yet. If you want to name this meerkat, please feel free. But that's just one of the things that's in my house. <laughs> David is supposed to be cruising the Mediterranean right now. I've honestly lost track of even, I, I, I don't know, I've just kind of written off this year. I'm not supposed to be anywhere at the moment, I don't think. I didn't have plans this far in advance because, I don't know, this, this started, it's quite funny to watch my videos that I made at the beginning of this. There's one video I made called When Will We Cruise Again? And I think my guess was about six months and that was March. So, I mean, nobody knew right now. <laughs> Hudson is awesome, typical kitty. Call the meerkat Richard. Okay, Richard. Richard, the meerkat is named after you. You can, you can make of that what you will. <laughs> Marcus the meerkat, he's called Richard. I'm sorry, he's called Richard. His name would be Lester. I have a giraffe by the fireplace. Any CDC updates? Not today. It is the 1st of November. They're going to have to update or get rid of their no cruise order. So we'll know more on the 1st, but it's 30th of October at the time when I'm filming this. I recorded this week's YouTube video two days before we find out what happens with the CDC. So I didn't know whether to say like, you know, if it had gone the right way or the other way. So I kind of just went for both ways. Jenny says, when do you think that cruises will resume in Southampton? It has got to be the beginning of 2021. It has, it, it's got to be. Um, I totally understand why we're not cruising in the UK yet. If you had a look at the UK's coronavirus numbers, I mean, it's up, down, and then up way higher than it was in the peak. Uh, it could be because we're testing more, but I understand why we're not cruising from the UK at the moment. In the UK, we've got different tier systems. 
So I'm in the most flexible tier and some people are in higher quarantine tiers. They wouldn't want to spread people around between the different tiers. So they wouldn't want to take me from the low risk area and let me go to the high risk area. So I suppose that's why. Um, we will start with kind of British Isles cruises and cruises that only visit a few countries. I think that will be the start of 2021. That's my best guess at the moment. I'm hoping so, because if we move further into 2021, we're talking like a year without cruising then. I know this year, it feels like it's been 20 years long and also 20 minutes at the same time. But if we get to a year of no cruising, uh, I think some cruise lines are going to be in more trouble. They've kind of planned for maybe a year, but what kind of a business can deal with a year of not only no revenue, but such a big cash burn? So fingers crossed, I'm hoping the start of 2021, we'll see some cruises. Yeah, April for UK cruises. Yeah, I'm hoping the start, but I think it's going to be it's going to be limited and it's going to be a few ships. It's going to be British Isles. It's going to be a few countries. And then hopefully as we move through the year, it will build up. But we need the government to say that we can cruise again. We really do. Jeremy says two thirds of the people watching this, two thirds of the people watching have hit the thumbs up for this video. Let's do that. That would be appreciated. I liked today how I had a down thumb before I even started the video. The thing is about YouTube is it sees every up thumb and down thumb as engagement and it the more engagement you get, the happier YouTube is with your video and the more likely it's going to share it with people. So if people give me a down thumb like that helps my channel, which kind of makes me laugh that they're trying to they're trying to bring it down, but that, you know, it helps. So thank you to the person who gave me a down thumb. And uh, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, the CDC said that you should not cruise, but I think they will lift the no sail order. I don't know, you know, it's a difficult one. There's so many people who are so convinced that the no sail order in the US will be lifted, but I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. The thing is, is it's a really difficult balance because we've got to work out coronavirus numbers are going up, but when are they going to come down? We have no idea. So many people have lost their jobs. The amount of jobs lost in the US, it's something like 800 a day are being lost from the cruise industry and related things a day, which is just insane. So you've got to balance up. If people lose their jobs, they lose their house. People can die and have a really bad time that way. So it's just difficult, isn't it? Um, I, I feel like at some point they've got to try. It's not as if that once they open the cruise lines, they can't close them again. You know what I mean? So in Germany, Aida started cruising. They're not cruising anymore because Germany's numbers are going way up. You can always stop again, but I think we need the chance to try these things. Tracy says, are you having fish and chips tonight as it's Friday? You know what we're like in the UK. I'm not. I'm having a Chinese takeaway. Cannot wait. I'm having a Chinese. It's my partner's been made redundant. It's his last day at work today. So I thought I would cheer him up with a Chinese takeaway because I can't think of any better way to do that. Ooh, Bob says, what happens to the CMV Marco Polo? I don't know, to be honest with you. It's very hard to keep track of all of these sold cruise ships. So I made some videos about the ships as they're being sold and there's posts on my website. But once they've kind of been sold and they've gone off to the other places, I kind of lose track of them. To be honest with you, I'm not sure about that ship. She went somewhere to a different company. Um, but yeah, Dylan says proper takeaway, yummy. Well, Ray and Sue say that they don't think that the no sale order will be lifted regardless of the election result. To be honest, I, I don't think it's anything to do with the election. I think if you look at the coronavirus numbers, same in the US and the UK, it's not looking good. Um, but at some point, we've got to try it. We've got to try it. The cruise lines like MSC have proved that in Europe, when they can follow the procedures, I think it's safer to be on a cruise than at home, to be quite honest with you. Because if I go to, say, a restaurant on a cruise ship, I know everybody who's in there has had a negative coronavirus test recently. If I go to a restaurant on land, I have no idea who's been in there. I have no idea if anybody's been following the procedures. Whereas on a cruise, I know that they have. To me, I would feel much safer being on a cruise than at home. <laughs> Ken says, made contact with Emma, travel agent, very helpful, glad you recommended her. Yeah, I have started to kind of partner with my friend Emma because I booked my last three cruises through her and I wouldn't book through anyone else anymore. So on my website, emmacruises.com, there is a page where you can get a cruise quote if you want a quote for anything. 
And uh, me and my friend Emma, Team Emma, will get you a quote. I'm not a travel agent, but I just, I'm confident in recommending her because that's who, I, who I've used. Uh, Jenny says, so sorry for your partner's redundancy. I mean, that is 2020. I still have a job. I'm the main breadwinner now. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Would also feel safer on a cruise and out in the community. Completely agree. Um, completely agree. Jackie says, question, I have friends who are living in London for two years. I want to line up a visit followed by a cruise. What ports make sense to leave if it's from if one is in London? Ooh, what itinerary do you recommend? So you're, um, almost all of the cruises from the UK are from Southampton that's down on the south coast. We also have places like Dover. There's ports up north like Newcastle. But Southampton is our main cruise port. And if you're looking to cruise from the UK, you're probably going to cruise from Southampton. It's pretty easy to get from London to Southampton. You can do it on a couple of trains. It's hour and a half, two hours maybe. It's not too bad. So that's what I would recommend. Um, as far as itineraries go, there's so many places you can go from Southampton. Very popular ones are the kind of Northern Europe cruises that go to like the Netherlands and Belgium and France and Spain. They're great. It can be very um, unpredictable weather there. It's quite similar to how it is in the UK. For me, my favorite, I think, from the UK is to cruise to Norway. It's very similar to Alaska. That's what a lot of Americans tell me. And Norway is just fantastic. It's beautiful. It's such a nice place to visit. Apart from that, you can cruise the Baltics. You can head up to Russia. You can do a two-week cruise up to Russia, stopping in Germany and Estonia and all of those lovely places. You could go down to the Canary Islands if you've got a couple of weeks. You can go to the Mediterranean if you've got a couple of weeks. What we normally do from here is... I would probably fly if I wanted to do a Mediterranean cruise and do a week cruise and fly back. But you can get so many places from Southampton. So my personal recommendation, if you want something cold, is Norway. If you want something culture and you want walking tours and you want to see all that kind of stuff, I would say the Baltics because there's so much to see, so much history, so much culture. And if you want something warm, head down, head down to the Mediterranean or Canary Islands. Canary Islands are lovely. <laughs> Jeremy says, Emma isn't a travel agent. She just plays one on YouTube. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to play a travel agent. I work in insurance. That's super dull. Jackie says, thank you, Jackie. You are very, very welcome. Well, we've got Toronto in the house. Squeezed in the Caribbean cruise last January. Oh, you were so lucky. I haven't cruised in this year yet. I almost forgot what the year was, 2020. I haven't cruised in 2020 yet. But I did get in one right at the end of last year. I cruised on the Norwegian Spirit, who's my favorite cruise ship ever. Just got that in before all of this stuff happened. I can't believe I've set up here in Hudson's favorite space. And he is not here. I have got a cup of tea, though. This is my cup of tea, and it's got Hudson on the mug. You can see, that's Hudson, and that's me. Isn't it cute? And it says, you have me a meow on the back. Do what? Do what? That's the problem. This is why I normally have squash. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry I can't reply and read all of your qu questions and messages. I wish I could, but it is talk too fast. Oh, have you ever been in Croatia? I have been to Croatia. Croatia is a lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, a lot of people agree with me about safe on the ship. I'm quite convinced about this, you know, because I mean, you know people are following the rules. You know it. Oh, Jackie, thank you so much for the super chat. I've watched so many YouTubers who do something when they get a super chat, and I don't know what I can do for you. Um, I would feed Hudson a dreamy. He's not here. You can change the color of these lights if you want. If you tell me a color, I'll change the color of the lights. I watch Sean and Seth's live stream every, every Sunday, um, and they have their lights set up so that the lights change when they get a super chat. I'm not that clever, but give me a color, and I'll change it for you, Jackie. I love your team. Oh, yeah, I got that for last Christmas, I think. Um, personalized Emma and Hudson. Blue, please. Okay, we'll have blue. Oh, you can see the laser. My goodness. There we go. Good, good. <laughs> We've got lots of blues. Six weeks till de sick for December cruise on Morella Explorer 2. That's exciting. I've been on the Morella Explorer 1. I took a 90s cruise on the Morella Explorer 1. I was supposed to be on Explorer 2 this September, supposed to be 
doing a 90s cruise again and obviously it's cancelled but those ships are lovely really really lovely Ooh, simon says good to see you supporting salt rock my favorite clothes shop yeah i've got a salt rock hoodie it's absolutely fantastic it's not a brand i've ever heard of before um but i just needed a good hoodie i really don't think you can appreciate a good hoodie enough and i love this one well we've got a dis disagree happy to have people disagree with me i don't think it's safe on a ship or anywhere though I would, much, I would much enjoy my cruise when safer. Totally agree. I would love it to be safer, but I feel like I have to be somewhere. Um, I'm quite lucky I'm working from home and stuff, so I'm not out and about and doing certain things, but I feel like I have to exist. If I'm going to go to restaurants and stuff, I feel like it's safer on a cruise than in real life. That said, I'm pretty much staying inside, pretty much staying inside. We have those strip lights along the roof in our living room. I love these type of lights. I've got some around my TV and some around my desk. This is my desk. I mean, I, I finish work at five. The lucky, amazing thing about working from home is I finish work at five. I log off at five. I normally film a YouTube video or something there, and then I sit at that desk uh, till I go to bed. I've recently started watching Game of Thrones. I know I'm very, very far behind. Let me know if we have any Game of Thrones fans in the house. I'm actually really liking it, you know. The problem I'm having with Game of Thrones is the names. I don't know anyone's names, and when they talk about everybody else, uh, I'm like, who is that? Is that the blonde woman? Is that the, the guy whose brother is this or that? You know what I mean? It's quite tricky, but um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm watching at the moment. Let me know if you like Game of Thrones. I know it's been years, and I'm very far behind, but I'm just trying. <laughs> Victor says, get a recording of a ship's horn blasting for each super chat. That would scare me, you, and it would probably scare Hudson if he was here. Maybe we could have one like that. I need like a little soundboard, don't I? Yeah, Scott says, I think Cruise Line CEO should release videos stressing they will enforce safety procedures when they finally reopen in the US. Yeah, I'm hoping that they will really enforce these. MSE and AIDA have been really good when people have broken the procedures, but we need that. We need those rules. We can't let anyone bend them even slightly or it puts everything at risk. So fingers crossed they will enforce those rules. It's in their interests. They're going to have to. So hopefully they will. It is difficult because, I mean, some of the people that have booked a cruise, what they're going to get, say you booked a cruise for next year and you booked it two years ago, what you booked and what you're going to get is very, very different. Some cruise lines aren't letting you cancel and get a refund. They don't think that's enough of a reason. And I would say that it is a substantial change to your cruise and they should give you a refund. That's just my opinion. But what you booked a year ago isn't the same as, as what you're going to get. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. I mean, I'm happy to book these cruises knowing what they're going to be like. But, you know, if you booked it in the past, it's not your fault, is it? Scott says, doesn't the agreement have a change for any reason? It's tricky. Um, I mean, cruise lines pretty much can can change things, but it's very different, I think. Again, you've got to balance that out with the cruise lines need to survive, but it, you don't want people who don't want to be on that cruise, don't want to follow the rules. I know so many people who don't want to go on a cruise if they have to wear a mask, and that's completely fair enough. If you don't want to, fair enough, but you can't go on the cruise. And if the cruise line's saying you have to come, that's when I think we're going to have people who are being a bit, you know, not following the rules. James says, what do you think of Scarlet Lady as Virgin's first ship? I made a video about this. It's the most popular video on my channel. It's had something like 500,000 views now because this is the last cruise ship I, I set foot on. Um, and I was confused. I was very, very confused by who is this cruise for? The price didn't match what I thought the experience was. And uh, I think you're going to have to watch that video. But the prices of Virgin Voyages cruises have come down so much since I made that video and they're much more in line with what I think they should have been since the beginning. Virgin have picked the worst time in history to launch a cruise line. They've got three ships. Hopefully it works out for them but I'm really excited for when people get on board. Real people. I know I'm a real person but real paying passengers get on board. Then I'm interested to see what everybody says. Scott has a good question. He says, what is the last ship that everybody went on? Please leave me a comment. Let me know where you went and when when you went, where you went and when you went. 
Dylan says the USA is trying to get an exemption of the Joneses Act. So this is an act in the US that says that every cruise, it has to visit a foreign port. You can't just do a US cruise from the US to the US only visiting US ports for various reasons. And that makes it very difficult because you can't do things like cruises to nowhere, which is kind of what we need now, because that would be a perfect way to start cruising. I think it makes perfect sense for them to get an exemption. They could always get an exemption for a couple of months and then extend it. They don't have to indefinitely have, a, have an exemption, but I think it would give us kind of a better way into cruising again. So fingers crossed they'll be able to do that. It makes it difficult for say you want to do Alaska cruises and Canada isn't letting cruise ships in, they can't just do an Alaska cruise. Like they couldn't, they couldn't just visit US places. It doesn't work right now. Oh, Anthem of the Seas. I booked Anthem of the Seas next year. Not, you've got Canada and New England. That sounds amazing. I've booked it for the Norwegian fjords. Can't wait. Really, really can't wait. Princess to the Caribbean, last cruise, med cruise on Morella Discovery. I love the Morella Discovery. Well, Sean has a good question. Do you think the cruise ships will put up the prices? I'm sure excursions now. Everyone will need to take one to get off the ship. I think they'll go down because I think they not the cruise lines know how much people are not going to like that, but they also know that they have no other option. So I think we're going to see the price going down on excursions quite a lot. MSE put the prices down loads because, you know, if people are already not happy about it, it's not what the cruise lines want to do. Plus, they're going to make so much more money, aren't they, if everybody has to do the excursions. The thing is, is say MSE put up the prices of their excursions, you would cruise with Costa. You would cruise with another cruise line. Rain Sue's Travel Channel has a transatlantic on Anthem in April 2021. That sounds amazing. Ooh, Anthem of the Seas before your 7th of May. Fingers crossed we get to go on this cruise. I really hope that we can. I really hope that we can. James hasn't been on a cruise yet. This is such a difficult time for first time cruisers. I can't imagine a more difficult time to start cruising but fingers crossed you've stayed positive through this i mean you're here you're still talking about cruising so that is a good sign jenny says norway is good no need to get off just join scenery from balcony i mean yeah i'll be so happy with that a week right now sat on the balcony i've put myself a balcony me on the anthem of the seas a balcony because i've always been a massive fan of inside cabins but I've always said there's certain places where I think it's worth going a balcony and Norway is one of those for sure. Ken's got Iona to the Canaries. I was supposed to have Iona to the Canaries in January, but that was canceled. So fingers crossed you get on that one, Ken. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath for it because as I think by March, we'll see kind of more local cruises and Canary Islands are quite far from the UK. So maybe be prepared for it to cancel. Um, hopefully it won't, but yeah. What is the cool lights behind your couch? That's my desk, like my, round the back of my desk, I stuck on some just little, little lights. Cheap ones, 12 pounds from Amazon, something like that. But I like it. So it's got different kind of modes. We can have like, we can have it like fading and stuff. See if we want different colors there. Um, it's just nice and relaxing kind of in the, the evening. I just sit there with the lights on. Will you be keeping Hudson indoors next week when fireworks will be going off? Is Hudson okay with fireworks? He couldn't care less. He literally doesn't care less. I spend quite a lot of my time now. I shouldn't, but I spend too much of my time on TikTok. And on TikTok, there'll always be videos that say like, don't play this around a cat or this is going to make your cat come to you. And it's some sort of sad cat noise or a cat kitten or something he doesn't care he literally does not care no interest in anything he's just sleeping his life away um but he's happy oh i don't know about that one billy if anyone in here knows anything about tampa and the cruise terminal um please leave us a comment because i don't know if i'm interested in that one granddad dennis that's an amazing name on iona in may to norway that is amazing um, so envious. Norway and Iona, two of the best things, I think. 
this is what I normally do. So I love balconies, but have found quiet public areas with great views where I could be if I chose to save money with an inside cabin. So this is what I normally do. I'm an expert at kind of finding those hidden decks and things. This is why I really like the Norwegian ships, the getaway and the breakaway, because they have a full proper promenade deck with seats and bars and restaurants. And normally I would just kind of set up there and I would kind of use that as my own huge private balcony. But Norway, I couldn't not do it. I had to do it. I thought about this for ages and I thought Norway. Um, maybe I, I didn't know that my partner would be made redundant and I'd be paying for everything and stuff. But hopefully it'll be fine by then. That's my plan. <laughs> Jackie says, Emma will change the colour of her desk light when we give her a super chat. Let's change the colour, people. Please help, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, you don't need to super chat me, but if you want to, I will change this colour. That's a lot of power, I understand. Um, yeah, <laughs> appreciate you guys. That's, but I, I understand 2020 is not a good year for anybody. At the moment, this is on a fading setting, so we've got all the colours going by. I can make it brighter, I can make it less bright. Exciting. Frank says, no new cruise terminal. Tampa Bridge, not big enough for big ships. We've been trying here for several years. Yeah, I did think that they had a, a plan to try and sort that out. Maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't. Marcus says, it will be interesting to see if the ships become larger or smaller post COVID. Advan advantages in both. Advantages, that word sounds, advantages. Why am I saying that, not in my own accent? Advantages is how we would say that in the UK. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of a, either a Northern or American accent there. Advantages in both. It's tricky, isn't it? I think we're gonna see smaller ships, to be honest with you. I mean, if you have a look at Norwegian Cruise Line, every single time they've made bigger and bigger and bigger ships, and then the ones that they're making now are smaller, which I think is very, very interesting. I love the big ships. You can have so much cool stuff on them. But sometimes it's just nice to have smaller ships. Hudson has just walked in the door. Come here, Hudson. Oh, right by Hudson, come here. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on in. Good boy. Up here. No one can see you down there. Here. He's on my lap. Can you see his ears? <laughs> Hudson. Oh, he's all wet. Ew. Come here. No, he's off. I think it's been raining, so he's he's doing that shaking thing that dogs do. Maybe he will be back. Maybe he will be back. John finally made it. Thank you, John. It is nice to see you in here. John finally made it. Uh, Marcus, nice to use my accent there. Didn't mean to. Every so often, I just accidentally say things in a different accent. Hudson appearance. What one little piece of an ear? Hudson, come here. What's this? Oh no. He's got muddy footprints all over the chair. Oh no, Hudson, come up. Come on. I'll show you the muddy footprints he's left. Come up here. Look, this is where you're supposed to be. There he is. Don't show your bum on camera. No, not your bum. No one wants to see that, Hudson. There we go, your lovely face. That is much better. Oh, he's got such muddy feet. Oh. Look at this, guys. This is the muddy footprints he's just left in front of me. Ah, crazy. Hudson not guaranteed. To be fair, Hudson has been here quite a lot. Um, he's been doing pretty good. Yeah, James says, I'm from the UK. I don't say advantage like that. It just depends where you're from. Yeah, I'm from the South Coast. It's advantage. It's glass. It's bath. It's grass. It's everything with an R in it, even though there's not an R in it. Bum alert. <laughs> Jenny says she loves the big ships. Harmony felt less crowded than the smaller ships. Yeah, it's strange. It's not necessarily that the bigger ships feel more crowded, even though there's more people on them. The MSC Meraviglia is one of my favorites, and she has four and a half thousand passengers, I think. But you would never, ever know. Walking around that ship, you would never know that it's so big. Hudson reveal. <laughs> Would Hudson go on a cruise? No. I mean, taking him to the vet is hard enough. I wouldn't want to take him on a cruise. I know you can. I could take him on a Cunard cruise across the Atlantic and show him to all the Americans, but I don't think he would like that. Yeah, Marcus says, I love large ships, but the number of suitable ports is limited. 
Yeah, I quite like it sometimes if I'm on a ship and I go to a place and there's a big ship that has to tender and I'm the small ship so I can dock. That's what I quite like. They do that in KOTOR. Um, every time I've been to KOTOR, I've been docked and I've always seen another cruise ship that has been tendering, which is quite nice. 147 watching, 83 likes, almost there. Thank you, Jeremy. I feel like Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Goodness, I feel like you're my little cheerleader here, like, like this. <laughs> Eve said, that's why I like Morella, smaller ships and all inclusive. I love Morella, one of my top cruise lines. Morella are a British cruise line. They have some ex Royal Caribbean ships, but they've redone them really, really well. As far as ship design, they're some of my favorite ships. Um, I think it's Splendor of the Seas and Legend of the Seas that they've got as Discovery and Discovery 2. And they're so lovely. They're so nice and all inclusive. Your drinks are all included and they're not an all inclusive price, if you know what I mean. Sometimes all inclusive cruises are so expensive, but they're really kind of accessible. Love them. Love them. Oh, no, David had the worst birthday last week. It was supposed to be on Anthem. Sorry, David. I hope you treated yourself to something, some nice food or something to cheer yourself up. Dylan still needs to go on biking. I really, 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 really need to get back on Viking. I would urge you to go on Viking with caution, though, because once you've tried Viking, um, everything else is just not Viking. It's just not Viking. <laughs> Discovery is my profile pick. Oh, yeah. I think they're good looking ships. You know what I mean? There's certain things about them that are definitely Royal Caribbean y. Um, they've got the kind of funnel bar, the atrium's very Royal Caribbean y. When I went on Discovery, I had a look at all the videos of when they launched Splendor of the Seas in 96, I think. And it's so funny. You see the videos, they're so 90s. And they used to do kind of acrobatics in the main atrium. They don't do that anymore, but super cool. I read that Morella are not sailing from the UK next year. Why? I have no idea. This is the perfect time for them to sail from the UK. I've cruised with them from the UK twice. This is the only time I've been on a Morella cruise. And they're so good. So good. Uh, Ken says, why no Emma Cruz or Hudson hoodies? I do have a Teespring and you can buy hoodies on there, but I think they're just a bit expensive. I know some people who've got them. Um, Hudson's back, actually. That's what I was just looking at. But yeah, I need to update that. I need to put the this Hudson design on the hoodies. Hudson's having his dinner. <laughs> my mom's here. She says, sorry, I'm late. Blame your granddad. Okay, I will blame my granddad. That's okay. Thanks for joining me, Mum. <laughs> what is your favorite food to eat on a cruise? Hands down, it is just a chocolate chip cookie. Chocolate chip cookies, because you can pick them up in the buffet. They're good any time of day, and they're just absolutely fantastic. Apart from that, I love things like on P&O, they have the most amazing Yorkshire puddings. They have a big melted chocolate chip cookie on MSC. Oof. I'll, eat, I'll try most things on a cruise. I tend to use cruises as times to try different foods, especially if you're in the buffet, you can try a bit of everything. Um, yeah. Hi, Mum Latisse, says Marcus. Is Hudson in the main dining room? I, I don't have a dining room or a dining table in my house, so I suppose technically, yes. This is one room. This is where I live, and he's in here. So this would be... It's probably more of a buffet because his food is just sat there and he goes and he eats it when he wants. But yeah, technically. Mike said Viking Sea was fab. I felt so young. Imagine me. I cruised with Viking when I was 24. Um, and that's the average age of a Viking passenger is much older because the price is higher and people my age can't afford to cruise with Viking. To be honest with you, um, if I could, then I would. Then I would. Eve says cheese and crackers is the bomb. It's things like this that are so nice though, isn't it? I love kind of just those snacky things. Hudson, can come back, get more muddy footprints on me. No? Ugh, mud. Ugh. Come on in. Oh, good question. I really like the life preserver anchor decoration in Bathview. It is made of wood and I've propped it up here with this plant. It could fall down at any point. And I really like it too. It just says welcome on board. Not sure if you can read it. <laughs> Peter says, how many Cunard cruises have you been on? I've only been on one. It was on the Queen Victoria. We did a week and that's where I started my website and then later my YouTube channel because I 
sat on that cruise and I thought, what on earth is this? This is not what I expected. This is exactly what people think cruising is. And this is not what I know cruising to be like. I've cruised with Norwegian and MSC before. And Cunard is a completely different world. It's everything that people think cruising is like from people that haven't cruised before. So if you do want that traditional dress codes and stuff, there's still cruise lines for it, but it's not it's not what I think cruising is, to be honest. <laughs> I like having cheese and crackers and tea right before bed on a cruise. You sound exactly like my mum. That's my mum's go-to snack. She would love that. Um, that sounds good. Yeah, I just love just constant snacking on a cruise. Hudson's found something interesting, something more interesting than us. What is the longest you've booked a cruise ahead of time? Probably just over a year. I don't think I've ever booked a cruise two years in advance, maybe 18 months in advance. Hudson's just trying to get behind the oven in the kitchen. Hudson, what are you doing? Come here. Maybe he's trying to find his dreamies. You've had enough dreamies, chunky monkey. I keep making TikToks with Hudson. I'm not sure he's enjoying it, but I really am enjoying it. I'll put them on Instagram. So Emma Cruz's Instagram, if you want to see more Hudson. Yeah, I did a, um, a live stream and I had to be, so when I got invited to the MSC for Elizabeth's naming ceremony, they sent me a sugar bottle, like the type that you smash that's like a prop, but I didn't want to smash it. And they'd already emailed me the invite. So I thought I don't need to break it. So I left it. And then I was on a live stream and I tested it on my head and it broke. So, you know, that was sad because I kept that for ages. <laughs> Come on, Hudson. Come here and give me views. You know, I can see kind of the retention graphs of these videos and I can see when people stay and when people leave and no one leaves when Hudson's on the screen. So I know you guys are just, you just here for Hudson. And I don't blame you because not all of you are lucky enough to have a lovely ginger cat. Just like Hudson. Valerie says, hi, Emma, how are you? So cool to catch you on live. I am good. I'm feeling very snuggly. I've got next week off work. I'm having a Chinese takeaway after this chat. And this is the perfect way to end the week. Got a cup of tea and everything. So hope you're okay, Valerie, and everybody who is in here too. Mark says, have you been on a land vacation at an all-inclusive resort? I have done before. I haven't in the recent years because I kind of feel like I need with this channel and stuff, every time I have time off work, it's cruise related. You know what I mean? It feels to me like a bit of a waste if I can't be making content and filming videos and learning stuff. So I haven't in the last few years, but before this, before all of my cruise stuff, yeah, I did. What do you know about in cruises? So in cruises is a thing that is, it's like a multi-level marketing thing where they constantly message you and ask you if you want this opportunity to cruise for free it is a legit thing um but the whole mar multi-level marketing part of it puts me off massively i wouldn't go near the in cruises thing at all um it's strange some people do have quite a lot of luck with it you can put money in and then it equals more money for certain cruises but there's lots of restrictions on it you have to take it within certain times and there's not many cruises on there and i don't know I wouldn't touch in cruises with a barge pole and I find the people that constantly message me about them very annoying. I don't mind this kind of multi-level marketing thing, but just tell me straight up. Don't like talk to me for 10 minutes and then, then bring this to me because then I'm thinking, I just, you didn't want to talk to me anyway. You just wanted me to join your thing. So don't do that. <laughs> Drew says, ever win much of the casino? No. I always budget $50 per cruise with a casino, not a big spender. I budget $10, $10 maybe per cruise. I'm not a big gambler either. I have won something like, I don't know, $50 from a $1 spin, which is amazing. But I'm the type of person who wins and then takes it and then goes because I think I've got more money now. I'm not going to sit there and just keep gambling it. So... I'm not a big gambler. I don't know how to play any of the games. I don't know how to play poker or anything. <laughs> Can you hear a noise now? That's Hudson's dinner. If it sounds like a little robot, Hudson has got a robot feeder. It'll stop in a second. It'll stop. Would you feel comfortable boarding a cruise in January or do you still feel it's a serious COVID risk? 
I definitely would feel comfortable cruising. I feel safer on a cruise than I do in real life. As long as everybody on that cruise has had a negative coronavirus test and procedures on the cruise are there and are being followed and people aren't being let off in port to get coronavirus and bring it back, a thousand percent I would feel totally comfortable, probably more than I would just going to a normal shop on land. Foxy says, hi, Emma. It's... Foxy in Brighton. Hi, Foxy from Brighton. It's nice to see you. I'm sorry, Emily. Did you do a live with Bruce at all? I did a live with Bruce on my channel and a live with Bruce on Bruce's channel. So there's lots of Emma and Bruce there, which is exciting. Do you ever splash out on speciality dining? I do, but rarely. Um, I'm totally happy to go on a cruise and not spend anything else on food. I feel like I've paid for food. It might be different if, say, there was a fixed menu where I could actually eat all of the free food within a cruise, then I would feel like, oh, let's try something else. But I can't eat everything that's free during the cruise. So I'm not a big fan of the specialty restaurants, but they have their place. Some of them are very, very good. And I do occasionally go to them, but. If you keep gambling, you will always lose in the long run. I mean, that's why casinos exist. They wouldn't exist if they didn't make money, would they? So, yeah. Scott says, when is your live chat with Sherry? My live chat with Sherry, just let me check my calendar. I've got Sherry from Cruise Tips TV coming on my Q&A on the 13th. So not next Friday, the Friday after. I think we're doing it at a slightly different time. I think it might be an hour later or something. I'll let you guys know. Two weeks time, I will chat with Sherry. It's very confusing because in the UK, we've just changed our clocks and you guys in the US haven't changed your clocks yet. So I think this is the one week where I'm kind of out of sync with you. I think, I, I think for you guys in America, this is a slightly different time than usual, but this is 5 p.m. for me. When's your live stream with Bruce? I've already done it. I've already done one with Bruce and Bruce has done one with me. I don't have a, a plan to do another one anytime soon, um, but I'm always happy to chat to Bruce. He talks for too long, sometimes two hours. Yeah, I talked to him for two and a half hours on his live stream, but we had a constant stream of really nice people in the chat asking questions. So, you know, I understand it's really hard to cut off the time, but I like to say, you guys join me for an hour and then after an hour, go on with your day. I don't know. I just quite like that. I think for me, I like to have, I like to know what I'm doing and when things end. Same with everything though, not just with this and the live chat. Yes, we set our clocks back this Sunday morning. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. So we're kind of in the strange, the strange in-between bit here where we don't match up. Very confusing. Very confusing. Yeah, you do it in November, we do it in October. Who knew? Who knew? Hudson's back. He's back for another snack. My cat's grazing when it's raining, rushing around, crawling the carpet. Hudson has been scratching the carpet upstairs. I told him off. It's hard to tell him off though, because he's super, super cute. Will you ever retire from cruising or are you hooked for life? I'm 26, so I'm not planning on retiring from cruising anytime soon, but my gran is 93, she's still cruising. And I hope that when I'm 93, I'm still cruising too. Who knows what cruising is going to be like by the time I'm 93, but I'm happy to find, I'm happy to find out. We'll wait and see. I wish they would stop daylight savings. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't feel like we need it anymore. In the UK, it's just dark all the time. So what does it matter? <laughs> I would go on a ship now over going to Asda. Yeah, I worked in Asda for two years and I'm so grateful that I didn't, have to work there during COVID because it was so hard working there even in normal times. For those of you who don't know, Asda is the UK part of Walmart. It's owned by Walmart. And I worked on the self-scan for two years, pretty much. Yeah, two years on self-scan. Uh, it's such a hard job. If anyone in here works in that sort of job, you have my respect. I work in an office job now and it's so much easier. So much. Thomas says, we're on the East Coast, normally five hours behind, but four hours behind this week until we change at the weekend. It's so confusing, isn't it? I did have messages from people saying, what, wait, what is the time today? Because I thought it was whatever it is in the US. 
Sorry, I just try and keep to UK time because that's my time. Thought you were much younger than 26. Interesting. Thank you. I had a comment. Well, I saw a comment the other day that wasn't at me, which makes it sadder. And it said from someone who said they thought I was 40. I'm 26. I don't think I look 40. I don't know. <laughs> if someone left that to me, I would be thinking, oh, they're just trying to be mean. Um, but they didn't even know I was there. So it kind of made it meaner. I don't think I, I think I look around 26. I am 26. <laughs> Book the vlogger extravaganza. Yeah, um, I'll hopefully be there. It's just 2023. 2023. Crazy. <laughs> Peter says he has to shoot now before his dinner goes cold. Absolutely. You get to your dinner and have a fantastic dinner. Fantastic. How is your grandmother at 93? Because my friend's dad is 95. She's good. She's quite happy. She would much prefer to be cruising rather than being here. Just sing around. But that's 2020 for you. That's 2020. You definitely don't look 40. Thank you. Appreciate it. Howdy to John, who's just joined us. Foxy thought I was 20 at the very oldest. Thank you, Foxy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's 2023. I mean, it's not as if you have to book a cruise that far in advance. The cruise is still going to be there in 2023. I think a lot can change between now and 2023. A lot can change. Hi, Emma. Out of the lines that you from blah, 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 blah. what is the best option for American cruisers to try out that are not also selling in the US market? Correct to be your interesting. So I am from the UK. Here we have our biggest cruise line is P&O Cruises. You might know about P&O Cruises. They're the cruise ships that have our Union Jack flag right on the front. You've got afternoon tea. You've got UK plug sockets in the cabin. That is the most British, I think. I like P&O Cruises. I know Americans who like P&O Cruises too. Sean and Steph, if you know them, they cruise with P&O. They're from America and they liked it. I also like kind of a Cunard cruise if you want to get really fancy. I know you guys sort of have Cunard going out of New York. We have Morella. They're a British cruise line. They're kind of more family based. They're all inclusive, but quite chilled out. If you want to move into European cruise lines, Costa Cruises are the most Italian cruise line ever. They're owned by Carnival. They're kind of the Italian version of Carnival. Very bright, very colorful crazy busy cheap really just cheap and cheerful and good fun you've got celestial cruises if you want a greek cruise if you're ever going to greece and want to get greek food and greek entertainment on a greek cruise line definitely celestial we've got so many of these cruise lines but i would say i really want americans to try p and o cruises more Sean and Steph loved it. And Richard says, and Yorkshire puddings. We have the best Yorkshire puddings. Sean and Steph didn't manage to find the Yorkshire puddings because they were looking in the pudding section. <laughs> totally understand why they would do that, but they're not puddings. They're um, sort of like pancakes, but you have them with potatoes and vegetables and, and meat and stuff for dinner. They're amazing. They're so amazing. What does the bottom of your hoodie say? It says, love your ocean, North Devon. That's what it says, North Devon. I don't know. I didn't read the bottom of my own jumper. <laughs> I would call this a jumper. It's a hoodie, but in the UK, we call anything like this a, a jumper. A jumper, jumper, jumper. <laughs> Why didn't they ask someone? I don't know. I think they were just looking because I had said to them so many times about Yorkshire pudding, so I think they're just looking for Yorkshire pudding, but you're not gonna find it in the pudding section because it's not pudding. Bruce also loves p &O as an American. I think it could be quite a culture shock if you are, but if you're coming to the UK, you might as well do a British cruise with British people, I think. I, I don't really understand people who say go to Greece and they just do an American cruise line. If you wanna be surrounded by Greek stuff, real greek food greek entertainment take a greek cruise it's something different so i would always suggest doing that you don't look 40 thank you i have children older than you <laughs> use your influence with carnival i don't have any influence with carnival but thanks to start up my cruise in december if i had any influence i would john i really really would 
but <laughs> they're not going to listen to me. A little British British YouTuber. Don't think they're going to. Richard says, do you know much about the tracelets? I think this is very similar to the MSC for me technology and the Ocean Medallion for Princess, the kind of wearable tech that can trace you and you can order things on your phone and stuff like that. Richard says, final chance to, he said, to kit that like button. I think he means hit, to squash it, to do anything to it. It would be fantastic. It's always nice to get the likes. I, I, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Have you ever sailed with Princess? Are they similar to PO? I think they're very similar to PO. They're kind of, I would say PO are more family and Princess are more kind of adult. They're all kind of about romantic cruising and the food's good and the ships are really nice and they're sparkly and stuff like that. I have cruised with Princess twice. I took a British Isles cruise with Princess and a Asia cruise with Princess. Absolutely amazing. Definitely one of my favorite cruise lines. There's just nothing you can fault about them. They're very good at everything. I really like them. So yeah, I definitely recommend them. I think if you like P&O, you definitely like Princess. As far as food goes, I think P&O and Princess are some of my favorites. <laughs> Richard says, Hit. Kit is a gentler version. Whatever you do, I don't really mind. David was booked on Princess in January, now canceled. Super, super sad. We've got princess cruises out of the uk next year which is super exciting what are you having for chinese emma some some rice and some noodles and some vegetables i'm not sure yet <laughs> let me know what you like from a chinese takeaway i i always think when i have a chinese takeaway it's a massive plate of food eat till you feel sick what a chinese person would think of that food and me calling that chinese food because they don't eat any of that stuff they would be embarrassed of my amount I can eat. <laughs> uh, do you have any news about US West Coast? I mean, we're just waiting. We're just waiting. I wish I did, John. In a couple of days, I mean, we should have more news. But at the moment, with the, the clear voluntary suspension of cruises in the US and the CDC saying you can't cruise at the moment, nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. Oh, Roger says, what are the best ports? Of course, cool, around England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. Wow. There are so many British Isles cruises happening next year, which is super exciting. I took one and we visited. For me, my favorite was going to Loch Ness. <laughs> I didn't find Nessie, but it was so cool. It was so rainy. I also went to places like Giant's Causeway. I went to Dublin, which was really, really nice. I like Dublin. I, I was really impressed with that British Isles cruise, you know. It's not something I've thought about doing because I'm from Britain. So I just thought, you know, I know this, but I don't. It was really, really nice. We even had sunshine. And I went in the hot tubs in the rain on the top deck. I was on the Royal Princess. It was so good. If you get the chance to do a British Isles cruise, definitely do it. Definitely. <laughs> Richard says, I was supposed to be on Anthem of the Seas in August and I already have next August booked. I've not been with Royal for about 10 years, miss cruising so much. What is the top 10 things to do on board? See, I haven't cruised on Anthem of the Seas yet, so I don't think I'm qualified to answer that one. But I'll let you know, hopefully, soon. <laughs> I should be on that one in May. So hopefully I'll get that done before and I can let you know, Richard. <laughs> Sorry to get off subject, but how is your grandmother at 93? Is she walking okay for a lady in her 90s? She's very impressive for a lady in her 90s. She is very smart. You don't want to take on my gran at Scrabble or anything like that. She's very, very clever. She's still walking around okay. She uses like a walker to walk distances, but she has a little scooter and stuff. So she's more than capable of cruising. And she loves it. And I really hope I'm like that when I'm 93. She's knitting me some Christmas decorations at the moment, which is super cool. Everybody needs someone to knit them Christmas decorations. <laughs> Lots of good suggestions here for the Chinese. It's making me very, very hungry. And it is time to go because I do stick to the hour. This has been really nice. I really like these kind of just chilled out, sit with a blanket and a cup of tea, chat to people on the internet. Hours, this is a good way to wind down the week. I feel very wound down now. I hope you guys are all okay and that you have a good week next week. I'm off work, so mine's gonna be fantastic no matter what happens. I'll probably spend it making TikToks, filming YouTube videos, 
I'm thinking about cruising a bit more. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much to everybody who has joined me and you've all left me lovely comments and suggestions for my Chinese and I appreciate it. I don't have a YouTube video tonight. It's going to be coming out Monday, maybe Tuesday. I'm planning on moving my schedule so that we have the new video at the beginning of the week, the live at the end of the week. And I'm also thinking about doing some more YouTube shorts. This is what YouTube is massively pushing at the moment. So you might see some 60 second kind of videos from me. Thank you so much, John, for the super sticker. Really appreciate it. I'm going to head off now because I promised you an hour and I don't want to keep you any longer than that. I'm sure your dinner is cooking if you're in the UK. And I'll be back same time next week. Same time next week. We will do trivia next week. Actually, no, I won't. I think I'm going to have to move trivia to Saturday next week. I hope that's okay with you, but I have got a plan for Friday and I'll let you know about it. But I think next Saturday, okay? Let's move it to Saturday. Same time, same place next Saturday. And then the week after, we will have Sherry from Cruise Tips TV. Hopefully, we'll have good news about the US cruising thing by next week. Thank you all for joining me, and I will talk to you later. Bye.